We're going to load the autoclave. This first one is with pouched instruments. We have little holders that keeps them upright and separated so that the steam can circulate and do its job. It's on a tray that goes and fits in the autoclave. There are different sizes of trays and they can fit in different slots. It's just going to slide right in. Also, before you run it, you want to make sure and check your water levels. You've got your green area as well as your red area. As you can see right now, it's in the red. So we're going to put some more distilled water into this opening and then I'll fill it up into the green. So you're going to load the autoclave with packs now. So you can either load them on the tray and then put it in, or put the tray in, then load them, which is usually the way I do it. In. And I've got three different sizes, so it shows you how that goes. So, and as you can see, that's too tall at that setting. I'm going to just sit at the bottom, so it's not touching the top. I'm going to push it back, but not so far that it's touching the back. Machine. What happens if it touches the back of the machine? It's going to burn the wrappings and make a foul smell and it's just not worth it. It's not pleasant. Again, you want to make sure that it's not touching sides or anything like that. I'm also leaving a little bit of space in between them, again, so the steam can circulate and do its job. You can also put pouches and packs in at the same time. If you're going to do that though, you need to make sure and do the setting for the power. So if you're doing packs and pouches, you're going to pick the packs setting. Obviously if it's just pouches, then you can just do the pouch setting. Just a little water. So before we go on to the next thing, I'll show you real quick how she filled that almost to the top. It's way up in the green. Um, talking about not having the packs touch the sides of the autoclave because they will burn that way. It's equally important as well that the packs are actually on this tray. So this tray is a vented tray with holes in it. So as the seam does its thing, um, it will eventually the autoclave is going to cool down the steam's going to go away it's going to re decondense whatever the word is into just water and it's going to fall down to the bottom of the machine and then it's going to drain out through a, a drainage hole and then sometimes does does ours recirculate or does it just use no it doesn't recirculate yeah um so, but this is important because what happens is while the steam is important in actually sterilizing the instruments, you don't want these packs being sopping wet. And if these packs were down here, they're going to just sit in water and be sopping wet. It's important um, because if a pack is wet and you touch it, now the inside of that pack is considered not sterile because that water can take any of the germs that were on your hand, any of the germs that were on the outside of the pack, and then take it down into the inside again. Up on the handle to push it all the way in and down to secure it. Those are packs, so pack one. It'll tell you, you know, temperature at the time and then it fastens for drying and then you can just push start I'm just gonna fill you generally can hear it making the noises as it's taking water into um, the main area out of the tank so um, once the autoclave is finished its cycle, then um, it is going to beep at you. It's going to make a loud clunking noise, which is actually the door opening itself back up again. And it's going to vent for a while. Um, just leave it 
be. Let it vent, let that steam escape, let the packs cool down completely. Because once again, you don't want to be touching wet packs. So sometimes when we're in a hurry and we, we want to get rolling with the thing, our tendency is going to be like, okay, autoclave's done, grab the packs. Just leave them sit. If, if ever you're in question, let them sit, let them dry.